you guys still go to your lectures and write your little notes and your little notebooks while you're in class on your little laptop. Why are you insulting me? On your little face. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're in medical school and you're still going to class, you're probably in the minority of people that are attending lectures still. So in this video, we're going to talk about why everyone is skipping class and what's better and what works for us. For my first year at Yale Med School, I attended almost every lecture. And in those lectures, the thing is they have a lot of material that isn't what they call high yield, which is for a lot of students who are starting medical school, it's their first experience into medical knowledge. You really need to get the fundamentals down. And from my experience in medical school, in these lectures, they really jump the gun and they start with the basics and they quickly move on to more advanced stuff. They focus on research. They focus on really cool stuff, but stuff that personally for me, as a first year medical student, I'm trying to get the basics down. And so lecture is not as conducive as going home and studying the fundamentals, looking at high yield like first aid books, firecracker, using those resources that are designed to really let you learn the basics of medicine. So comparing second year to first year medical school, I think I learned actually a lot more in my second year when I stopped going to class, which sounds crazy, but it's the difference was night and day for me. My school did focus on the fundamentals and the basics of sciences, and I think they did an okay job of it, but it still wasn't better than the job that I could do at home by myself. So during my entire first semester, I wasted going to class and I just found myself not paying attention, not retaining anything, um, and thinking it was mandatory. When I found out it was, was not mandatory, I was out of there, immediately just ditched any class that was a lecture type, that was kind of, you know, uh, non-mandatory, I was just gone. I was studying at home, which was way more efficient with my time. Third semester came and I was like, these kind of labs that are mandatory, these things where you go in and you get in groups and you spend literally half the time, maybe 75% of the time talking to each other. I hate not doing it's, anything. Exactly, the group work is just so right. slow. Yeah, it's just, it's not, I mean, yes, it's helpful to get different perspectives and things like that, but it's just much better to get to the answer, get your work done you know, learn and be done with it. Especially when medical school, there's so much knowledge. We don't have 15 minutes to talk in a group about right. what's the best answer. And Let's the, just get going. Exactly. Chop those onions. Exactly. Chop those onions. Uh, and the other <laughs> I started taking the mandatory labs and things like that. And I was just like, peace out on those too. I didn't even go to those. I took the hit on the points. I thought the points that I would lose was worth the knowledge that I was gonna gain on my own. And it worked out. Um, I was learning a lot more. I wasn't wasting my time in, in these kind of mini labs and things like that. Because not everything is useless, right? There are some of those small groups, some of those labs that are really helpful. But the problem is you have crap, 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 and then they sprinkle in something good. Crap, crap, crap. It's like, how are you supposed to figure out what's good and what's not, right? Some of those small groups are amazing. You'll learn so much. But how do you know before going there that it's worth going to, yeah. right? So I just skipped everything across the board. And I might have missed out on this great small group, but I don't know if, if it was great or not. I didn't go there. Mine was more crap, 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 crap. Uh, it's kind of fun, crap, 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 crap. Uh, so the statistic that I read in an article recently was that only 13% of medical students are attending class often. So that's amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. I still remember out of 100 something students, we had like five or six students attending lecture. Sometimes like one student. Exactly, yeah. One one <laughs> with exactly. the professor. There are some yeah. instances where there's one student yeah. and those are the saddest ones. They're Especially with like watching lectures online, you can watch the lectures yeah. at two times speed. Right. And that's just so much more efficient than Everybody. the slow parts where the teacher is writing something up in what seems like slow motion, right. the parts where they're going over something that you already know. Because the way medical school is structured is that there's a lot of different professors, right? And nobody knows what you do know and what you don't know. Right. So there's a lot of assuming what you don't know, and there's a lot of repetition of something you might have learned three times already. Right. So it's much better if you study at home, you're able to make your own schedule and keep learning things in an orderly fashion, right. rather than this sporadic like scattershot method that I think a lot of medical schools do. And luckily though, there are a lot of schools that recognize this and you're free to, you don't have to go to class, it's not mandatory. So you're free to study at your own pace at home. There are those schools where it is mandatory and for those people, I feel sorry for you because you're definitely in a suboptimal situation. Yeah. Some of them tell them to turn off their phone in the Facebook and you guys are like super screwed. So. Yeah. So this brings us to my main point that I wanted to get across and that is 
If you ditch class and you're at home, you're on your own time, your own schedule. If you have just classes that day and you skip it, you can sleep in until like 11, wake up, go to the gym, study, and be on your own circadian rhythm. And I can study until like one or two or whatever. And it's just so much better learning if I can go to the gym in the morning, I'm fresh, I can get something to eat, I can study, you know, take a break when I want. It's just so much more effective. And I will say though that for some students, they need that structure, they need that order. Sitting in a classroom is probably the best way for them to learn because otherwise it's, it might sound good to study at home, but when you put them at home, they just can't do it. Or you put them in the library, they just can't focus. So for some people, that structure is a great thing. But I think if you're able to, studying at home is probably a lot more effective. And I think that does it. It's a nice little quick short one, making sure you guys know that medical students are skipping out on class. Maybe this might even apply to you in undergrad. You can look into how many classes you can skip. I know I definitely was looking at what's mandatory and what's not all the way back even in high school. So make sure. <laughs> how are you skipping out high school classes? <laughs> You know how I do it. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, basically that'll do it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like, etc. Blah blah blah. Thank you, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.